Welcome back to the Bentonville Beacon Podcast. I'm your host, James Bell. And in the first season of the podcast, we are diving into Bentonville's outdoor recreation industry. I'm thrilled to have in the studio today with me, Drew Medlock, CEO of Allied Cycle Works. Drew. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, let's softball the first question. Tell us about yourself. Sure. Uh, well, I am a uh, bike industry veteran for the most part. Um, I did teach mathematics uh, to junior high kids for about one year. <laughs> and after that, I decided I wanted to work in the bike industry and uh, basically been focused on that ever since. Smart man. Um, so aside from leading Allied, uh, what drew you to Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas? What's special about this place to you? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, what's been moving in the momentum here for a long time is, is really special. And, um, uh, there's, there's something awesome. Uh, a, I, I love Arkansas. Well, someone let me back up and start there. I used to live in Little Rock, uh, for five years and I have family in the region. So I love the region and know about it, but, uh, seeing what's transpired here over the last decade has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, just, uh, a community that's progressing and, and, and really developing, uh, in a great outdoor Mecca that's not well known. But even more importantly, it's really built around the bicycle. And Bentonville's really taken a unique approach of making their outdoor economics and kind of upgrading the uh, uh, livability of the space all around the bike. And that's really unique. Yeah. Yeah, well, I too grew up in – or lived in Little Rock. I grew up there, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> so what part of Little Rock were you in? Uh, I lived in uh, in town, so I lived in, uh, in Hillcrest for a little bit area. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh, will you tell our audience about Allied Cycle Works? Sure. So Allied Cycle Works is a bike manufacturer, and we build all our frames by hand here in-house in Northwest Arkansas. And uh, it's a little bit unique because most brands, Specialized Trek, et cetera, make all their frames in Asia. Um, and so we you know, had the vision to um, kind of bring high-tech uh, frame manufacturing processes back into the United States when I grew up. All the high-end builders were either based in the United States or Europe, and there was a real special feeling of getting a, a hand-built frame by a special bike builder that knew about riding qualities and characteristics you wanted. Um, but that changed as the advent of carbon fiber uh, came into the bicycle space, and carbon fiber bicycles are lighter, stronger, and more higher-performance machines, and that uh, capacity and knowledge for frame building kind of left and migrated over to Asia as brands didn't really have that in-house knowledge to build those kind of materials in the United States. And they also, you know, saw the value of scale of being able to outsource all the manufacturing. So, you know, basically our goal was to bring that back um, just because, it, you know, we can control the process better. Uh, we can come with a, a better end product for our customers. And, you know, we just, th that's what we love to do. You know, we believe that we can do it better in-house. That's cool. Uh, so, do I understand right? Y'all make road and gravel bikes. Do you do any mountain bikes? We do not currently make a mountain bike. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I like the way you phrase that. Now I'm really interested. Um, so, uh, yeah, I bought a mountain bike last year. And one of the things, and let me first say that it's uh, the first time in quite some time, I'll start counting it two decades that I've uh, bought a bike. And so I'm still trying to keep it upright right now. Uh, but I did buy a, a carbon fiber uh, frame. And cool. one of the uh, things that I noticed was all the manufacturers wanted to tell me about all the different reasons you should want carbon fiber. And sure. um, really, I was just looking for durability and, and lightweight. Is that all that really counts for carbon fiber or am I, am I off base there? Um, well, I mean, those are the primary drivers um, to move into that space, which are weight versus uh, strength. And, you know, when you're looking at a bicycle that's prim primarily powered by your own <laughs> yeah. engine, you want it to be as efficient as possible. And carbon fiber is the most efficient platform uh, for a bicycle frame. Okay. Well, hey, I read on your uh, website that your carbon is U.S. made uh, pre-preg, what is that and why is that important? <laughs> yeah, right. So basically there's all kinds of different carbon fiber out there. Um, and, and basically we use the, the, 
the term prepreg to basically say that inside the carbon fiber, it already has resin inside of it. So resin is what basically saturates the carbon as we cure it and makes it harden. So carbon fiber by itself is a really dry, brittle substance. Mm -hmm. And the resin is what makes it like sticky and tacky so we can build it with. Great. And I think you sort of answered, uh, had a question uh, that I made a note of about uh, bikes being built in Asia. And you guys are, are building here in the U.S. So uh, how is that working for you? It's going well. I mean, it's not without challenges because um, there's really not a um, – there's, there's not a um, – uh, a knowledge base for U.S. manufacturing to pull from uh, for this type of bike. So we've we, we've kind of been figuring it out as we go a little bit, um, but we do have a really uh, you know unique situation that our main uh, engineer and R and D guy Sam Pickman he came from Specialized, and so he kind of oversaw a lot of the development. It's been over to Asia, the factories many times himself uh, as an engineer standpoint. Uh, I have as well. My side's a little bit more on the, the commercial side of it than the actual manufacturing side of it, but we kind of know what happens over there and um, and, and kind of how to recreate what they do in the best factories in Taiwan and China uh, in-house. Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of workers, folks that are familiar with working with carbon, did you find any locally? Did you have to create those? Um, we pretty much created them all. So we were lucky enough that we do have a couple of people that came from other bike manufacturers as well that have some knowledge of laying up carbon fiber parts. Um, but when we moved to Northwest Arkansas, I mean, generally, we you know, it was, a, it was a handful of folks and everybody else we recruited and trained here. Um, and Northwest Arkansas has been really great because there's a, a good manufacturing base and, you know, um, uh, you know, quite frankly, a lot of people that came from poultry industry that are mm -hmm. good at working with their hands and technical jobs were, were easy to train uh, into our carbon fiber layout process. That's great. Are there any are there other manufacturers locally that use carbon? Yeah, so there are um, just like right down the street, uh, Game Composites. Uh, mm -hmm. They make carbon fiber aircraft. Um, but it's a little different process than what we do. And, um, uh, most people using the type of materials we do are in the aerospace industry. So. Okay. Yeah. Those are pretty sweet. I actually got to tour game composites the other yeah. day. Um, <laughs> now on a plane. Nice. <laughs> I should figure out how to ride the bike first. Yeah. Bike first, <laughs> plane second. Um, is everything, do y'all do everything in-house? Do you outsource anything? No, we, uh, you know, we, as we started, there are some small parts and some tooling that we were out outsourcing when we first got started, just because the scope of what we were trying to accomplish for how big we were was, sure. was really complex. And that's another big, you know, advantage of Asian factory, because they can really focus on a specific aspect of manufacturing and they can outsource tooling and you buy your paint and like, you know, there's like outsource suppliers for all these different aspects of your business. Yeah. So you can really just focus out one, one, one um, aspect of it. But here, there's not really a base for that. So um, we outsourced some small parts and some tooling initially, but now we're to the point where our latest bikes were basically manufacturing all the tooling for the bike itself. We're doing all the aluminum machining in-house, um, all the painting, everything, you know, on our current bikes is, is basically in-house. Cool. Yeah, so maybe you could tell us how Allied started. I mean, I've heard stories of... Yeah buying a shop in Canada and <laughs> yeah. moving it here and some help from the state of Arkansas. I'd love to hear yeah, uh, sure. about this history. Yeah. So, um, gosh, about five years ago, um, there, there was another, uh, frame manufacturer called guru and they're from Canada and, uh, guru fell into some tough times and they, they went bankrupt and basically sold off the two, two aspects of their business. One was like a, a fit tool and the other one was a frame manufacturing side of it. Um, our founder at the time basically bought all the tooling that they had for frame manufacturing out of bankruptcy and uh, loaded up on a truck with a buddy of ours and moved it down to Little Rock, Arkansas and said, hey, let's figure out how to make frames. <laughs> so that was kind of the origin of uh, Allied Cycle Works. And, you know, originally they were kind of just recreating what Guru in Canada did uh, in Little mm -hmm. Rock. And then when Sam Pickman came on board, he really started transforming into its own brand, its own product, a uh, unique idea. And then we've just been evolving from that. Oh, that's really cool. Um, it's always nice to be able to, to buy uh, somebody else's stuff. Yeah, and we still have some of that tooling equipment that's still operational. So. <laughs> uh, you bet. So as a manufacturing company uh, here in Northwest Arkansas, um, having 
access to supply chain as a manufacturing company at all must be really important. But um, how has it been for you considering that you're here in an area with really the foremost supply chain experts in the world, the number one supply chain school really at your doorstep? How has that been for you and how has that helped you, if any, during the pandemic? Um, well, I mean, I, yeah, I did. we don't, you know, in, in terms of the bigger supply chain network of what's going on in Northwest Arkansas, mm -hmm. what we do is so micro and so different than everything else that it doesn't really have much bearing on anything else that happens around here. So um, that being said, you know, um, on one hand, uh, you know, raw materials like carbon fiber, aluminum, things like that, they have been um, a little bit more painful to source, you know, than, than mm -hmm. typically, but we've been able to stay on top of it and not have any outages or crazy, you know, price increases that have been catastrophic. So we've been able to mitigate that pretty well. And as a frame manufacturer, you know, we've, we've been able to keep our lead times uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to grow our capacity with demand over the last couple of years through the pandemic, uh, where most other frame manufacturers who are outsourcing everything are really, you know, having big hurdles to keep up with supply chain and ramp up their, their supply chain to do that. So since we control so much of it so directly from the frame manufacturing side, we've been able to keep that pretty consistent and pretty seamless. Um, but the other part though is, you know, we do have to put parts on our bike from mm. Shimano and SRAM. So chains and gears and all that stuff. And we're kind of at the mercy of the same, you know, supply chain constraints that every other brand is. Yeah, you bet. You know, I watched some of y'all's uh, factory videos online. Thought oh, the cool. whole process was really cool. I'm a real nerd when it comes to learning how things are made. Um, just like the whole carbon fiber process of building something with it and layering, it's just really is super interesting. So from the time that you um, cut the carbon, lay it up, bake it, all the way out to you're, you paint it and you're ready to put a bike in a box, how long does that take? Yeah, so basically our process works when a uh, customer places an order for a bike from us. Uh, we put that in queue and we operate first in, first out, and every customer's bike essentially is made to order. So, um, so James, you order a bike from us, basically uh, our lead times right now are hovering around 10 weeks. And so it will basically just sit in a queue for about four weeks. And then at four weeks, it will ask Lee come up that like, hey, now it's time that we'll actually start your build. And from that day to out the day, out the door is about four to six weeks going through each step. Hey, that's not terrible considering how long it takes to go to a bike shop and order a bike. Yeah, and, and that, get that's it to begin with. That, that, that's cool. And that, you know, I've, I've, I know what lead times are from some other manufacturers and, you know, ours isn't like instantaneous, but we know what it is and we're, we're not perfect, but we're within usually one to two weeks of that. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I waited from July until October for a bike and apparently I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's not lost on me how short of a time, uh, 10 weeks, uh, really is. So where can, uh, folks buy you if they want to buy your bike, do they just do it online? Do they order through their local bike shop? What do they do? Yeah. However they want to do it. So, um, we do sell on online directly to customers. Uh, if you're in Northwest Arkansas, you can come visit us directly at our factory. Mm -hmm. And then we have a slew of great dealers all over the country, uh, uh as well. So really just depends on the level of service you want and, and, and how you want to purchase the bike. Obviously, you know, if you go to your shop, your local dealer to pick up a bike, they can, they can give you a little more service level than we're prepared to do at the factory with fitting and mm -hmm. tuning your rear derailleur down the road and, and helping you with service and other accessories. Cool. So, uh, Bentonville's known as the mountain biking capital of the world. Yeah. How is the, the road and gravel scene here? It's, it's really, really awesome. Actually, I would say, um, the gravel riding here is probably some of the best in the country. And I think it's, uh, gosh, in my mind, almost equal to the mountain biking. There's so many just amazing country roads and, and a massive network of stuff all the way, you know, all the way down into the Ozarks and then mm -hmm. up into Southern Missouri. I mean, it's just, it's endless and there's more of it than I ever could think of to, you know, explore. And, um, You'll see that we have some great cool events here focused on gravel like rule of three and big sugar mm -hmm. in the fall and those are getting huge turnout so um obviously that stuff just exists you know it's not built infra infrastructure uh, but that it, it's very innate to you know our, our area and, and really amazing sure yeah uh turning 
making a little bit of a turn here. Uh, you spent some time in Utah, some time mm-hmm. in Colorado. Myself, I spent a little bit of time in Colorado uh, as well. Um, those are beautiful places, you know. Absolutely. And so here you are in Northwest Arkansas. We touched on it a little at the beginning. What what else is special about this place uh, and and the things that are being built here? Yeah, it's a that's a good question. Um, I see, especially coming from Colorado. Um, I, I just see so much opportunity still left here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's so much good momentum and positive momentum uh, about really uh, growing uh, the outdoor industry as a whole, um, growing our community. And um, I, I just, it's almost hard to explain except for the fact that it just feels like positive and good and you can see the momentum. Uh, I think I came out here about five years ago and I got to go out a sneak peek of what they were going to, what turned into Kohler bike park. And, you know, I, I, they told me what they were planning to to build out there. And I was like, man, you guys are insane. (laughs) And then five years later, I come back and all of that is built plus some right where, where I lived at in Colorado, uh, being part of a trail committee. I mean, the progress for trail development and the fight, it was, it, it was like one step forward, two steps back every single day. And it was, you know, those places are amazing and there's lots of good riding, but just the momentum and progress is really difficult and slow to come by. So it's cool to be somewhere where you feel like there's kind of a blue sky in terms of, you know, what's, what's possible. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it is hard to grasp if you're not here and seeing it and feeling it. Like yeah. you said, it's a momentum you can, you can actually feel. Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't have to be here for five years to feel it either. You can feel it in the yep. first day. Absolutely. And that's uh, what I find really incredible. You just don't see places like this, that sort of momentum. Um, you know, I hear nowadays we're building trails at two to three miles a week, which yeah, just every time you go out and ride, there's, there's something new that you haven't ridden before or haven't seen, you know? So that's, it, it is kind of mind boggling. Yeah. So, uh, Drew, uh, Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas are really full of these endless possibilities. How does a business that might move here or found here capitalize on what's happening here, whether that's an outdoor rec or, or any other business or well, industry? Yeah. I mean, the, maybe sounds like an oversimplified answer, but you know, you don't have to try too hard to capture it because it kind of is pre-existing. And I think the, obviously the secret's out. So employees and people want to be here and want to be part of what's going on. And I think there's lots of people like myself that came from Colorado or California where uh, this sounds uh, kind of crass, but the dream's kind of tapped out <laughs> there. And there's not, you know, and, and for a manufacturer or businesses focused on outdoors, you know, uh, trying to run a factory in Colorado, um, you know, your employees, they can't buy houses. It just, like it's just not really doable, you know, uh, yeah. for them anymore. It's a good place to live if you, you know, don't have to work, <laughs> and you, and, and uh, you know, you have a passive means of the income. But here's a place, you know, that it's growing. There's there's lots of development. I can see, um, you know, more diversity coming into the area, and and it just feels like a place where you can have this like access to the outdoors and be a part of it, but also like kind of build a sustainable business climate for your for your employees. Yeah, you bet. Uh, what's next for Allied Cycle Works? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, uh, we're we working on some new projects and kind of diversifying our categories a little bit. So we're always, you know, focused on product development and uh, keeping pushing the boundaries there. Um, you know, we want to be a uh, premier manufacturer uh, when it comes to performance uh, bike space. So nice. uh, from road gravel and, you know, obviously the next kind of spot we'd be focused on would be mountain bikes. And, um, uh, so you'll see more of that coming soon, hopefully. And, um, you know, then also just focused on growing our footprint as a manufacturer equally. Can't wait. Yeah. Thanks. So what should I have asked you that I did not ask? (laughs) Good question. Um, I, I think one thing that's interesting is, you know, like why buy a bike made in the United States versus one that's built in, built in Asia. And, um, I think that answer is, you know, really has to do with the the level of quality and um, control that we have over every step of the process. And then also the fact that, you know, you're investing in a product that's made by people um, here in this community and uh, passionate about, you know, 
what we're doing and um, a real connection to not only where you're riding at, but also your community. That's neat. Okay, I've got one more question for you. It's straight out of left field. Sure. <laughs> um, totally unrelated to any of this. If you had a superpower and that superpower came with a limitation, what would it be? And I'll give you an example to help you out while you think about this. Uh, my superpower would be that if I was watching a sporting event and I wanted to be there, I could pick up my remote, press a button, and I would be transported in that sporting event. The limitation would be that a person not of my choosing would be transported in as well, and that person would absolutely hate sports <laughs> and would be basically tied to me, sitting next to me the whole time, and would complain about it the entire time. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, um, I don't know if this is a superpower, but, you know, I mean, this is how simple of a person I am, but when I dream, I dream about riding, like, but not – riding in a way that I could ride. Like I'm like the guy on the video doing amazing tricks and huge jumps and it all seems so effortless. That's what I dream about. So that would be nice. my superpower just to be able to like whatever type of riding or event or whatever, just to be able like to be amazing at it. Um, what would the limitation be? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you just stated it. You can only do it in your dream. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Bummer. Um, yeah, I never have dreams like that, but I do, do dream in comedies. I don't know what that means <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Yeah, I dream it, in comedies. <laughs> it's, it's my version of dreaming of flying, but I usually am flying on a bike. <laughs> hey Drew, thanks for spending time with me today. I know our listeners really appreciated it. I, I loved listening to uh, your story and that of, uh, allied cycle works. And so, Hey listeners, if you're, if you really like what you uh, heard today and you'd like to hear more, learn about more Bentonville's uh, businesses and uh, leaders and about Northwest Arkansas, this place where you can have more of what you want and less of what you don't, hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast player or visit BentonvilleEconomicDevelopment.com. See you next time.